Hi, welcome back to another piece of our SQL application tutorial. In this part of the video, we're going to pause on the coding and talk about design. So the subject is UML diagrams. Now, most students of mine would say that design is not the thing that they would prefer to do, but I force you to do it because it turns you into far more organized in your mindset and your projects turn out on time and with far fewer errors. So it's good to invest the time. My name is Shad Sluter and I teach software development at Grand Canyon University. So you can check out my tutorials on studycoding.org or you can subscribe to my channel. So the first thing I want to show you is a UML diagram for our current application. So you're familiar with our music app. So this diagram shows two classes that hold our data. So you can see on the left side, we have an albums class and the right side is a track class. So these are in the C-sharp code. This is not necessarily in the database yet, but they're very closely related. There's another diagram. This is called an ER diagram or an entity resource diagram. And this should look familiar too, because we built this directly out of the MySQL Workbench tool. And so you can see that there are two tables joined by a foreign key. Now, you're supposed to see that these are very closely related in this case. So this isn't always the case. Sometimes Java classes or C-sharp classes have a lot more methods and properties in them. So the, the bottom line here where it says method, I've pretty much ignored because we're just using these classes to hold data. So UML is on the left, ER is on the right. Now you'll also see that there are some different connectors between the classes. So classes can be associated, they can have aggregation, and they can have composition. So in the first case, if we were to say a bicycle is a class, it could be associated to an owner. So it doesn't necessarily have to have an owner, but it could. However, in the second part, we can see that there is an essential piece. So if we were to design the bicycle class so that it had more components, such as frame parts, these would be called composition because the uh, part itself is useless without the parent or some kind of a, a component that really has no purpose apart from a bicycle. Now you could make the argument that some things like a wheel here at the bottom, a wheel can exist without the bicycle. It's not very useful, but you can imagine it. So it's kind of a fine distinction when you talk about uh, composition and aggregation. So in the case of our application, I chose to use aggregation here in the UML diagram. You can see that a track is part of a album. And so the album has a property called a list of tracks. So you could argue that tracks can't exist without an album, but you can release a single, I think. So I chose aggregation to represent this in the UML diagram. Now, if I started to ask for new features in your app, the first thing I would do is to send you to the drawing board. And I would say, let's add some comments. And before we even start coding, I want you to draw the picture of how we're gonna handle these. And so we would add a comments table to the database, wouldn't we? And you can see that we would have a foreign key so that each comment is associated with a track. Now the track can have multiple comments. So that's a one to many relationship. So that's what the tables would look like if we were to make an ER diagram for a comments part. Now in the design for the application itself, we would have an associated UML diagram. And so you can see almost the same thing happening here. In this case, I used a little black diamond to indicate that comments are a composition relationship to their track. The reason I chose composition was because if you were to delete a track from the system, the associated comments would have nowhere to go. And so a comment should not exist apart from its parent, it should not exist apart from a track. So on the left side, you can see that the relationship between a track and an album is labeled as aggregation. That's because a track could exist apart from an album. However, on the right side, I have labeled the comments and tracks as a composition relationship because a comment should not exist unless there is an associated track. Now let's add some more features. Let's say if I were to add users and artists to the tables. So you can see that now a comment is associated not using a string for the username, but an entire class called user. So the user can have maybe a login screen, could have a password, could have a bio. I don't know what you would put in a user class, but you can imagine all of the things that go into a user. 
Same thing goes with the artist over here. So instead of just using a string and saying that this album belongs to the Beatles, we could say that the artist has multiple pieces. We could have a little biography on the artist. We could have a list of all albums that the artist has. And so your, your application starts to grow, adding new classes that are related to each other. So then associated with that would be the database. So the associated ER diagram shows all of the tables and the relationships and the foreign keys that go with them. Now, by the end of this course, I'm going to ask you to create some challenge activities, and those are going to include things like comments. So keep this in mind because we're going to see that soon. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do something called compound queries, which is really two queries kind of combined into one action. So we'll do that next.